What's up everybody? Today we're going to show you how you can run your Blue Yeti boom directly through your DSLR. Let's get started. Okay, in order to make this happen, we're going to need a couple of things. First of all, you're going to need a Blue Yeti. This particular version is the blackout version. I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to pick one up. I got it for around 120 on Amazon. They do make a whole bunch of different colors and color combinations, but the price just goes up. So the other thing you're going to need is a 3.5 millimeter TRS to 3.5 millimeter TRS cable, one that's long enough to reach from your Blue Yeti to your DSLR. Once you've got those two things, you can plug the cable that came with the Yeti into the bottom of the mic and the other end into your computer. We're going to set it up so that we don't have any problems right out of the gate. In order to do this, you're going to click on Launchpad, System Preferences, Sound, Input, and Yeti Stereo Microphone. Here we can see the input volume and also the input level. We want to adjust the input volume so that the input level isn't maxing out. We don't want to see it much more than three quarters of the way at any time. If we do, we're clipping our data and losing some of that precious audio that we worked so hard to get. Now that you've got your computer all set up, it's important to note that when you are recording, you do need to have the microphone powered by that computer. You simply can't plug it into an outlet, it won't work. There's drivers on the computer that do help the microphone to run. So now that's out of the way, let's talk about how to set up your camera. In order to do that, you'll take your 3.5 millimeter cable, you're gonna plug one end into the bottom of your mic and the other end into your DSLR. You're gonna to have to change your video mode from automatic to something that lets us dive a little bit deeper into the settings. I simply change it from automatic to the P mode. Once you've done that, click on the menu button and find sound recording. You're going to change the sound recording from automatic to manual. This is gonna let us make some changes within the camera. You're gonna want the recording level, in my opinion, to be one above off. We don't want any of the internal functions of the camera making decisions for us. I'd prefer to let the Yeti mic do it. Here we're gonna make sure that we don't have sound going above 12 dB. Again, if it's going above that level, we're likely clipping our audio and losing some of that audio data that we worked so hard for. One thing to note right here is that you wanna make sure that your microphone is not on mute. If the mute button is solid, your mute is off. If it's flashing, however, it's on and you're not going to be able to set up any of those functions inside of the camera. Now, once you've done this inside your camera, you're ready to go. Oh, my camera's gonna die. Oh, better hurry. The other thing to note is that the microphones are not on the top of this mic. There's three microphones built within the Yeti and all of them are on the sides. So when you see someone talking into the mic like this, this is incorrect. You want to make sure that you're talking into the face of the mic. There are also four settings on the back of the microphone. There is a cardioid, a omnidirectional, bidirectional, and a stereo mode. I always use the cardioid. The cardioid is the mode that looks like a butt or a overweight Pac-Man. That one is, on, that one is uh, saying that only my voice coming from this direction will be picked up. All the other sounds around here, it's not picking up, which is particularly useful because where I film these videos is primarily concrete. Not the best circumstances because you have reverberating sounds, but this microphone is honing in simply on my voice in the cardioid. All right, I had to hurry and interject this into the video. So I actually finished the whole video, got done editing and everything, and I felt this was important. So I went back and refilmed it, and now I'm gonna add it in. Now, I want you guys to see the difference between uh, speaking into a Blue Yeti here that's on my desk, that's not six to eight inches away from my mouth, and also listening to a Rode mic that's got a cold uh, shoe mount on top of the camera, which is, is good. I mean, they, they make good sound and everything, but it, the distance is the main problem. So I'm gonna unplug this right now, and I'm gonna plug in the Rode mic just so you can hear the difference. So here we go. All right, still got me? Okay, you're now listening to me on the Rode mic that is just mounted onto the top of my camera. So you can, you can obviously tell the difference in sound quality. It sounds much more echoey and reverberates quite a bit more. Now, 
To make it even worse, I'm going to take the Rode mic off and let you listen to the internal microphone built into the camera. Okay, so here is the Rode microphone that I had on top of the Canon. I got this for around 80 bucks. It's a good microphone, but it's not something that you can have right next to yourself when you're talking unless you buy some sort of extension. You're now listening to me over the uh, camera and as you can tell, it's bad. It's, it's just really bad. In fact, I, I can't take it anymore. I've got to plug it back in. Okay, you're back. You're back over the Blue Yeti. So you can tell that the difference in sound quality is very substantial when it comes to microphones. But truly the best microphone is the one that's closest to your mouth. The further back it gets, the more problems you're gonna have. Uh, thanks for letting me throw that in. Thanks for watching you guys. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, feel free to give it a like and subscribe for new videos every week. We'll see you next time.